noticed a lot of the reviews for Chartreuse, the new album that you guys just put out. They talk a lot about how your sound has sort of expanded uh, since the, the first two EPs. And I was curious if that was something you were conscious of as you were writing that material, or if it's something you're going to be trying to further uh, branch out with your sound as you write more. It definitely wasn't conscious, because one of the songs was like the first song that I ever sent her. Mm -hmm. So it was like the material on the record was kind of like a hodgepodge of like lots of different times. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'd like to write a record that's like more cohesive. Like I, I feel like I'm starting to write now, like a record kind of maybe. I don't mm -hmm. know. Never it done was, it before. I feel like we're kind of impatient about stuff, so mm -hmm. it's like we just, for the EPs especially, just like whatever we had, we would just go in and just like get it down. And this, we went to LA to record, so we did have a little bit more time, because it was like we were there to do that specific thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like while we were here and also working and doing other stuff, so maybe like we was more focused maybe, and that's why it turned out that way. Right. Not really sure. So, speaking of reviews, I read a recent review of one of your shows that seemed to focus more on the color of your sweater and like the length of your bangs than the actual quality of your playing. And so I have a, like a two-pronged question here. <laughs> one, one question is, do you think there's still a stigma uh, regarding women in music? And the second question is, are you sick of hearing that question? And uh, what do we do about that fact? Because um, yeah, I imagine that's not the first time like you've a, been asked that. Of hearing the how does it feel to be a woman and of course. music question. I haven't read any of the other articles on that actual on that site from that reviewer. So maybe he tell maybe he talks about all the outfits of everybody all the time. I, I actually know, though, but did probably. Not. He slammed my boyfriend's head. Oh, he did. Yeah, so I was already prejudiced against him. I actually did didn't talk about read the article, so I, I, I just no? I just heard that. Oh, he you just heard. Okay. <laughs> but also, like seriously, this article there's like two paragraphs that's just talking about yeah, like shark off their back, yeah. their back, yeah. and it's fuzzy and it's rock. And, and it's, by the way, a sweater. Yeah. Like, by the way, they're like, they're like nice sweater. Like a whole paragraph. So crazy. Yeah. Women can yeah. do things other than have their periods. Like yeah. wow. So my real question, cool. my real question, I guess, is like, what? How do we move just, forward from like, this stupid question that we yeah. keep? Bumping our heads against like whatever this wall is. Fruit. So I feel like people in like journalists need to kind of listen more to the music and then think and be more inspired by that, other than just like the fact of the gender. Because it just feels like low hanging fruit, you know. Yeah. It's just like like they they're lazy, so it's like oh, I'll just talk about how you're a woman and music. Well, and but but it also becomes also, hard. You know, I guess. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I also I think that in general, music journalism is kind of dead. Gone to shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate that at this, like in 2015, it's still such a shocking thing for some people that women are playing music or that it's some a point of reference mm -hmm. because none of us, I don't think, started to play music because we were, are women. Like, yes, we are all feminists and yes, um, we are all musicians, but those are separate things. And I think that it shouldn't be a political statement if a woman picks up an instrument. Mm -hmm. you know? I agree. Um, but what about the idea that it become like it becomes difficult to call it out almost because here we are saying we're sick of you know people writing in this way, but there's also this problem of like asking the question, uh, isn't it a problem? Is becoming trite, like asking you, aren't you annoyed that mm -hmm. uh, like? You, like you've heard that a million times yeah. too. So I guess I don't know that there's an actual answer to this question so much as it's interesting to think about how, how do you sort of resolve those two problems and you know actually move past the issue. I think that they should maybe when someone's writing about a band they shouldn't even talk about the gender of the people you know because there's there are female musicians or male musicians there are like Transgender, Transgender musicians, I maybe don't talk about the gender, don't talk about what the person is wearing, you know, just talk about the quality of the music and the quality of sound and what the live experience is like. Well, rather at the same than time, that. though, you can't just ignore all those other factors, like how you look, how like people read you, like for what you're wearing. You're like, you know, you know like simple T-shirt and nondescript pants, and that's like part of your look. Are you calling me boring? 
No, look at your <laughs> fancy glasses there. Wow, you're almost on your way to two pairs. Halfway <laughs> <laughs> there. Uh, but uh, no, I think I think it is it's, it is frustrating that it has to be talked about. But I think it's important to continue to talk about about these issues. Like, I don't know about you. I mean, I feel like for the most part you've been in an all female band, but like for me. One of my bands is all female, and we haven't encountered any problems because uh, we've just all been doing music for a while and from different bands with men. Mm -hmm. So like people are like, "Oh, I recognize that girl. She's played with men. Men mm -hmm. acknowledge her." But like, I walk into like a venue in North Carolina with my band of two dudes, and they're like, "Hey, whose girlfriend are you?" Mm -hmm. Or like, "Where do you want me to set up your keyboard?" And I'm like holding a guitar, and I'm like, "You know, um." You can just set up my keyboard in the bathroom. <laughs> like, fuck you, fuck you. Uh, but also, like you know, people coming up and asking me, "Oh, do you need help with that?" It's a mic stand. Like I, yeah. I can unscrew a thing on my own. Thank you. But like that kind of thing is so prevalent, like everywhere. We've gotten and, that too. I mean, we've had like, male drummers as well. So, but I feel like it's there's always comments about. Tara and I like oh wow like Tara plays guitar so well for like a for, a girl, for a girl or yeah. like oh you know do you need like do you need help with this do you need like I, I definitely see that too and Leslie toured with us last year and there was a couple incidents like that where people yeah. were like adjusting our gear for us or they would like be like do you want me to set up the kit and Leslie was like I know how to set up my kit so yeah, yeah. but now when people like the guys come up and like you want me to carry that I'm like, yeah thank you thank you Here's a tip. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it's, I feel like there's a different, I mean, someone helping out isn't necessarily yeah. like a sexist thing. Like if a, a male yeah, friend, help, yeah. right. Like yeah. if a male friend like asks me if I need help carrying like, an, like you guys helped us carry our gear in, um, then that's fine. But it's different if someone acts like you can't do it yourself or like you are incapable of. Like, like the sound guy who came up and decided it was cool to adjust my guitar pedals. Yeah. Oh, but sound guys are always dicks. Sorry, no offense to him. No, it's true. Very nice. It's true. Yeah. You guys also did another interview recently um, where you you gave a recipe for an ice cream flavor, mm -hmm. which sounded really good. I didn't, I didn't make it. I'm sorry. Um, but it was a cool interview. It was cool that we kind of got to see your relationship um, like within the band and like learn something of that you guys love ice cream. Um, but it struck me, it Love struck food. me, it struck me that that was like a decidedly non-serious interview. And I was curious if you feel you're taken seriously and, and or if that's something you want. Our band's called Shark Muffin. Okay. It's not very serious. We don't take ourselves <laughs> seriously. It's, a question, it's just a question. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious if that's something you want. I if mean, you take yourself seriously, how serious are you and um, how how much do you want that reflected yeah. back? In I mean, I miss when band, bands used to be a lot funnier. I think, and I miss the days when music videos were funny, like like way too, like some pretty one pop punk stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like people do take themselves a little bit too seriously nowadays. I don't think we take but, ourselves seriously, like yeah. in in the sense that you know we can't laugh at ourselves. We don't want to be laughed at. I don't. I don't think that you sh like you should have a persona necessarily, and I think that we try to like avoid that with, you know, and present ourselves as we are, and like we are funny people, and mm -hmm. we like to laugh, and we like to eat ice cream and pizza, and like. And my wife. Yeah, I don't I'm think it's one. black or can white. I, can I, have more? I think it's you know you can be serious about your work and then garçon, not take yourself. Uh, garçon, please. <laughs> Please. Some cab. <laughs> no tip yeah. for you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we just like to have fun. So it's an honest thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, people, I mean, people aren't black or white. Like, I could be serious if someone's talking, is like having a serious discussion mm -hmm. with me about something. If someone brings up politics or feminism with one of us, like, we're not gonna make a joke of it. What I really wanted to know was, I guess, if you felt if, if, I guess, you answered my question, which was you wanted to do something that was fun and cool and spunky and whatever, rather than it being forced upon you because other people didn't take you seriously. That was what I was curious about. Oh, okay. Well, I think that, yeah, I think it was more like we, we started playing in a band because we liked to do it. Mm -hmm. And then, every, then I think people 
because we are women tack on like oh this is a feminist band are you a feminist and like we are feminists but i think that's different than being a feminist band like yeah. the goal of the band was not feminism the goal of the band was to write music that we liked and that but we enjoyed. But it's also to inspire other people yeah. men and girls. True. young men girls. and girls yeah that's true. I, mean, I, I do get little girls sunglasses yeah. I, really I worked where i loved when like 14 year old girls would come up to me and be like oh my god they're my new favorite band yeah. i never saw it. Somebody play with that like that before. Well, I think that's a good place, uh -huh. a good place to end. Thank you, all three of you, very much. Um, we're gonna go check back in Carriage House and listen to Shark. Mm -hmm.